welcome back to another studio vlog this week. It has been a couple of weeks since I uploaded and I do explain that in the next clip. It's uh, I wanted to come in. It's currently the 26th so I'm getting ready to upload this vlog today and I realized I didn't really film an opening and I know this video is quite long so we're gonna keep it short and sweet. So hi my name is Karina. I'm also known as the artistic newfie here on YouTube and other social media platforms and I have Patreon and an Etsy store as well. If you'd like to check out the links for that they're down in the description. Uh, for those of you who are um, usuals here, welcome back for another video. Uh, this one's going to be a bit different and uh, we're actually going to watch my, um, I wouldn't say it's a great process. There's the cat. Uh, there were mistakes. Mistakes were made. Things need to be learned, but this video is going to be mostly about my new set of um, Mia, Mia, Himi Gouache. I bought the huge 56 uh, color set and most of this video is pertaining to that, me painting, showing you what it looks like, um, but it's not like a review type thing because I can't review gouache because I don't know anything about it. So um, if you want to see me fail a little bit, learn a little bit, all that fun stuff, <laughs> just stick around and uh, I'll see you towards the end of the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another studio vlog. I wasn't sure I was going to vlog anything today, um, but I just got a delivery. Uh, it is um, 20 after four on the 12th of March, and uh, I've been working on some stuff. I'll show you that in a second. Um, I haven't been feeling well the past week um, through my back out, so I haven't really been wanting to do a whole lot because uh, medication that I'm taking is making me really sleepy and all I want to do is kind of sleep and sit around. I have been working on some digital art but I really haven't been posting a whole lot but let me show you. I bought something out of some Christmas money that my parents gave me for Christmas clearly um, and let me just flip you around and show you what it is that I bought. So I managed to buy this big massive set of um, Maya Himi gouache and I am super excited. I'm not overly thrilled with uh, Amazon or the postage because they they don't know how to um, package things properly or um, take the boxes or not damage things. This came by Purolator, not Canada Post. So thanks Purolator for damaging everything but this is still good on the inside so I'm going to take this out of the plastic wrap and open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. I've been watching videos all day. I'm also actually currently watching uh, Monkey Mintaka. I have her uh, muted there. Actually I, I stopped the stream long enough for me to open up the box. Sorry April, I am watching you on Twitter though. Um, not Twitter, geez, Twitch. Um, this is what I'm working on. I'm not gonna show you this super close up because I don't like the way it looks, but I have been messing around with some mixed media stuff, some watercolors and acrylics and you know, pencils and stuff. And uh, this is what I got so far. I'm not totally liking it, but it's not done, but I am messing around with things that I don't normally do. But that's what I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn April's stream back on here and watch her draw some ducks. And I'm going to open up the um, gouache and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so I've been sitting here for the past half an hour and I haven't even taken the cover off of this thing yet. Um, I apologize if you can hear the space heater going in the background, but uh, we're, we're trying to not turn on the electrical heat here today because it's, it's fairly nice outside. It's just, it's a little chilly in here. Um, so I am going to pop the top off of this for the first time. This thing, I just want to let you know, weighs a ton, a ton. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I'd say... <laughs> I say it's somewhere between five and ten pounds ish. I think that's what I'm thinking anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna pop the top off and see what kind of condition the inside is in. Okay, so everything is kind of where it needs to be. I thought these were a little bit bigger. It's kind of um, oh, they're hard. To, why are they so hard to get out? I've heard of a lot of people taking off this. Um, foam in here because the paints get on this. You can see that the, the the tubs that the paint is in is kind of engraved inside the, the package here. So I may, I may take this off. I don't know yet. I'm going to do a little bit of research before I do pop it off. 
but um, I'm just gonna put nope put this right here on the inside I'm sure you guys have seen a ton of um, videos god they look a lot smaller they look a lot smaller than what I was thinking from watching the videos I mean it's still a nice um, fair amount of paint in there but they they are a lot tinier it's smaller than like a dipping sauce container um, just by a little bit so it is really neat though I'll probably have to take all of these out um, that's black I think it doesn't say on there but it does say on here some of this is wow so hard to read so it's, it's got this little postcard on the inside like if you've watched a ton of these unboxings already probably um but there's some of the the colors are very hard to read so yeah so i think what i'll do is um i'm not gonna pull a lot of these out right now like these are so hard to get out like they're really jammed in there So that's what they kind of look like. Yeah, they're, they're really, like that one's easy to get out, but I guess you kind of have to take them out in a row and then put them back in. I guess well, these two look really similar. One's black and one's blue, but it, it looks very similar. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'm actually gonna wait until after supper to do, to take these all out because I have to get supper in about an hour and I don't really wanna start at this. This one is violet. I don't wanna start at this and then have to, have to stop. This one's called acid blue. The containers are very sturdy as well. They're not, um, they're not flimsy like a dipping sauce container so that's what i'm comparing them to so we'll see we'll see it's kind of cool it's kind of neat uh like i said there's um 56 colors i don't have enough room here and my camera doesn't want to cooperate with me so this is the the set it's huge it's heavy like i don't even want to hold it up um i am going to use the crap out of this thing and i'm actually going to start over the weekend so i will keep you posted on what it is i'm working on and when i start taking the lids off i'll give you guys some clips of that and i'm not going to show like swatching or anything on here i don't know why i'm not just showing my face here um, i'm not going to do any swatching on camera or anything because a lot of people have already done that and I just I want to get into working with the, the paints. I know I look like crap, I apologize. I'm not wearing any makeup because I didn't think I was going to record anything. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna go and finish this jackalope that I'm working on. My camera is all over the place. And uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of research. I think I'm gonna take out this foam uh, eventually because I don't want the paint getting all over the cover and then mixing in with uh, with the other colors in the in the set. But I'm super excited. I want to do some landscapes and some flowers with this stuff. So um, maybe we'll have some more art videos on the YouTube channel rather than studio vlogs all the time. It would be nice because I can kind of add some music to the videos, a little bit of talking, and uh, concentrate on what I'm working on rather than having to be on the camera all the time. So um, I will check back in with you guys a little bit later. So as I had mentioned, uh, I wasn't going to show the entire unboxing and taking the lids and everything off of all of these containers because a lot of people have previously done this. I'm doing a voiceover in the future here, uh, so I'm just going to talk over some of the things that I did. I just want to let you guys know right off the bat that some of these covers were ridiculously hard to get off. The plastic was almost, like the covers were almost fused to the plastic itself, and this is what happens if you leave this foam on. it it sinks down into the paint and picks up the paint and it stays on the foam. I mean, you can scrape it off and use it if you're going to paint that day, but nine chances out of 10, you're not gonna wanna use all those colors. And I have been spraying uh, the um, the pans here with a little mister and I've probably done it maybe five or six times I'll spray it as soon as I open it I'll spray it again before I close it and it's been two weeks since I've had it and the paints are really holding up they're not uh, there's a little tiny bit of drying on the top but you can actually still put your paintbrush in and pull out soft paint so it's not like it's cracking or anything like that so I do keep that mister handy and it's also great for if you have paint dried up in your palette as well or on wax paper. I've been using wax paper 
hold that thought. This is what I've been working on. Um, that's what I started over the weekend that I got the, um, the paints here. And I will say that that painting, which we'll talk more about later, looks better than the second painting that I've done. So I do decide to take off this foam on the inside here. And uh, I just, I didn't want to have any wastage of the paint. I did, uh, you'll see here in just a little bit uh, that I decided to get some packaging, packaging tape. Words today, words. Uh, I used some packaging tape and I taped down the handles. The reason that I did this was because where the handles, um, I just made a mess on myself here with the, the paint. Uh, the handles, they can move back and forth on the outside of the package, which means air can get in there as well. And I'm pretty sure that's why the foam was on there to keep it airtight. But I, what I did was I folded down the, the handles and I taped them down so that you can see me here just moving them around. I taped the, the handles down so the air couldn't get in through those holes. That's what I'm trying to get at. So, and then when I put the cover back on, after I took the foam off, uh, and when I took it off again, there was no paint on the inside cover. So that is one way that you can save some of your paint. And I've noticed that the little clicky handles on the side, I'm calling them clicky handles, I know, proper proper terminology, right? Um, they seem like after a while they may break because it's just plastic hinges, right? So um, if that does happen, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But uh, you can see here that I'm, I'm taping off where the handles are. I This, honestly, this palette, I don't trust the lid enough to use those handles to pick it up anyway. So whenever I pick it up, I literally pick it up on its sides because I just have this fear or the first couple times that I lifted the package up that the handles were or the one of the, the clips on the sides were going to give out and the paint was just going to go everywhere. So I, I didn't care about taping down the handles and locking in that air. So I'm just giving you guys a little uh, overview of what the colors all look like close up. And um, some of the colors, I don't know if I'll ever use them. But uh, the white, I wish, honestly, that some of the colors were replaced with two extra white because I'm going through white like crazy. Uh, I didn't finish filming this piece. I didn't start it on camera, so I didn't want to finish it on camera. But I know some people like to see paintings um, when you peel off the tape around the outside. So I thought that I would add this in. And if you're not familiar with me or my channel, I am from Newfoundland, hence the name The Artistic Newfoundland. Um, Newfoundlanders are sometimes known as Newfies. Uh, it does offend some people, but it doesn't offend me. Um, I'm okay to be called a Newfie. Uh, but this is a typical fishing stage, uh, fishing shed. There's a lot of different terminology, but to us it's a stage. And uh, it's where fishermen would tie up their boats and keep all their fishing gear and their boating gear and things like that. And I, I saw this picture on Pinterest and I wanted to give it a go. And I fought with this for like three days, but I really like how it turned out. Is it perfect? No, not in the least. If you looked at it up close and personal, it... Um, it's a bit of a mess, but I really like how it turned out in the long run. And after I took off the tape along the sides here, I really liked it. I mean, like I said, there's some things that I can improve on. And I feel like this painting here compared to the next one that I did that I actually show me... Um, fighting with in this video. This one turned out a lot better. I don't know why. I don't know if it was because I was recording myself doing the other picture or what have you, but uh, this one here turned out much, much better. So if you are, you know, skimming through the video and you're watching the end of uh, the video instead, um, just know that that portion of me working on gouache is not the best one. Uh, I also thought that I would pop in a little bit of a side view of some digital work that I was working on as well. And this is one of the bunnies that I have for the uh, Patreon sticker sheet for the month of, um, it's for this month, but it's going out the first week of April. So it's like a spring themed uh, sticker sheet. Uh, I'm having issues with my sticker sheets. Uh, I'm trying to find ways to work around it, but uh, for now I do believe I'm gonna stick with sticker 
Baker packs. And I just wanted to say that um, I will be offering um, my old Patreon stickers that have never been released in my on my Etsy store. You will have a chance to get them coming up in April if you haven't, uh, if, if you probably can't support me on Patreon, or maybe there's only one pack of stickers out of seven that I've done that you might like and you'd like to get those for yourself. I will be from now on offering my stickers that I'm doing for Patreon after the fact over in my Etsy shop each month. So I want to give my patrons time to to get the stickers first. I was doing this in the beginning and, and, and I was only... Um, I was offering sticker sheets, and then after my patrons would get the stickers, I would offer them my Etsy shop, and then I wanted to try just doing exclusive stickers for Patreon, and uh, it's really hard, and I, this may sound really harsh, but I don't have that many people over on Patreon right now, and I love my patrons. I really, really do. Everyone who has supported me from the beginning, even if you've left and, you've watched, and you're watching this video now, your support like was greatly appreciated, and if you're still around and you're still supporting me, again, support Support is greatly appreciated, but it's really hard to spend a lot of time on one pack of stickers or a sticker sheet, and I can only offer it to like two or three people. So I am going to start offering them again in my Etsy shop in hopes that uh, some other people will want to purchase the stickers as well. The only thing is, um, you know, Patreon is not just about the physical rewards either. It's all of the things that I'm like the behind the scenes pictures and the extra content that I'm putting over there, the digital downloads, the podcasts and, and everything like that. So while some people are in the sticker club and higher where you're getting physical rewards, it's not just about getting those physical rewards every month. It's about everything else that's involved with Patreon. And uh, I hope that uh, and I hope that people who are in my Patreon community right now um, appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, I hope that's, that's what I'm going to do going forward. Anyway, only thing is, these aren't going to, these were given as a sticker sheet, uh, which have not been sent out yet. They're going to be sent out uh, towards the end of next week. So they'll probably be sent out on the 31st of March. Everything is all done. I just need to create a new thank you card. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do or offer a, a print or something as a thank you. Uh, so these were given as a sticker sheet, but... When I put them in my Etsy store, they're going to be listed as sticker sets, so like a sticker pack. And I have cute little backing cards and everything already made. And I'm going to have my um, my Voodoo set uh, uploaded. There's going to be the Cottage Core set that I did. There's going. What other ones do I have? Um, I have a set of dogs that I'm going to re put up in the Etsy store as well. Those are from years ago, so I'm going to try it again now that I have more people follow me over on Etsy. We'll see if anyone wants some dog stickers. And uh, there's a couple other ones there as well that I'm going to be. All my mermaids that I used to have on there because mermaids coming up, I have um, edited, edited the stickers so that there's not a big background in the stickers and it's just the mermaids themselves. And I'm going to be turning those into stickers again as well without the big fancy background. So it looks more like a sticker rather than a big um, sticker painting that you can put on something if that makes sense so stay tuned for that that'll probably come out uh, you'll see what they're gonna look like in the next studio vlog because this one's ridiculously long um, but yeah I'm just uh, this is how I work I just wanted to show you guys how I worked with um, working on the the tablet here I do have a new setup which you'll see later in this video so I can start doing some more top-down uh, videos again, and I'm oh, I'm I really I don't know why I didn't think of doing this before um, But you'll you'll see later in the video my dad helped me um, my parents live next door So if I need help with something and and Jeremy's not around then my dad's always willing to help So that's great. So he whipped up something for me in the matter of like I'd say by the time we he, I gave him the plans of what I, I drew out what I wanted to do um, by the time he he took it and and put it together it was like a half an hour and then half an hour to put it on the wall so um an hour's work and i have a brand new setup and yeah you'll see that in just a little bit okay so <laughs> this is where the disaster of a painting starts some of you may say in the end it looked okay and i agree with you it'll look okay in the end just okay but holy hell did i struggle painting this and I can't for the life of me figure out why it was so much more difficult for me painting this particular piece, like I had mentioned before in the, vlog, in the vlog here, 
um, than it was to paint that fishing stage, the um, the Newfoundland stage that I had. Um, this one was much harder. I don't know if it's because this one had a lot of grass in it, but the other one had a lot of grass in it as well. So it also had a lot of lighter and brighter colors compared to the last one. So I don't know if the more um, earthy colors made it a little bit easier for me to paint, uh, but there's room for improvement. So if you're here, if you're here looking for a gouache tutorial or me telling you what to do with gouache, I'm sorry, but you're in the wrong place. <laughs> so uh, I'm also not posting this for people to critique my work. I know I have a lot to learn and I don't need um, people coming into the vlog here telling me, hey, you did this wrong or you did that wrong and you should do this. I mean, polite criticism or critiques are welcome, but don't be rude. <laughs> um, I know I have to work uh, on how much water to add to the gouache because I heard a lot of people say it's like working with watercolor and it's like working with acrylic, but to me, it was friggin' neither. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit, it was awkward. Uh, like I had mentioned, the first the first painting was okay. This one, I don't know if I, there was points in time where I was adding too much water to the gouache, and there was times I wasn't adding enough water to the gouache, and I wasn't letting it dry before I put on another layer. And I've watched so many videos, and I know there's like this fat over lean thing, the same as you would if you were using oil paints. Speaking of, I've never used oil paints. I do have them. I just, I'm too chicken to try them at the moment. So that could be a, a, a video coming up, me trying uh, oil paints for the first time. <laughs> be prepared. That could be a disaster. Um, so this, um, one of the other things that I've noticed that I, I didn't quite use the same colors that were on the picture that I was using. Some of the blues and the the colors for the water didn't turn out quite like they were in the picture. And I wasn't really trying to copy the picture like perfectly, but I mean, a similarity would have been nice. So <laughs> I did get a couple of things on the partially right side of things, I guess. And I'm sure as we go forward, when you get the top down view, I know this kind of an angle is not the greatest here, but when you get the top down view in just a little bit, uh, you'll see kind of where I've gone wrong. Uh, and I think what I need to do going forward is to really start out my gouache layer more like a really thin watercolor, let all of that dry and then go in with the dark colors because I butchered these clouds trying to go in really thick with the paint right off the get go. And uh, I kind of messed with these a little bit, but like I said, towards the end, towards the end, if you can bear with me and get through the ugly stages of this picture it does look like something uh in the final piece and um but that's that that's pretty much all I can say and you can see here I've got the palette open off to the side and the paints aren't drying up really quick I do have a space heater in the room here and it's going quite often it's not now I have I have it turned off to do this voiceover but uh, it is going quite often and it is quite close to me. So um, I found that it hasn't really affected the paint. Although I do spray them once in a while. If I, if I feel like I'm going to have them open for longer than a half an hour or so, I will give them a spray in between just to help um, with that, you know, the top not getting crusty kind of thing. But uh, yeah, so the next clip that you're going to see is my new setup. I'm going to leave you guys here and uh, I'll be back just after the next clip and kind of talk my way through the rest of this painting. I hope you guys aren't getting bored. <laughs>
guys, so um, it's the next day. As you can see, the pitcher is still sitting there, not finished. Um, I did something. Her, my, my dad actually helped me. My parents live next door, so if I need something and Jeremy's not home, I can run out and ask my dad to, to give me a hand if need be. Um, and we did this. Well, he did it, really. I just drew up a little plan of what I wanted done, and he went out in the uh, backyard shed and put this together for me real quick. I know it's a little bit ugly on the wall now and I do have to put a light switch over there because, you know, the, the, the plate. Um, hopefully next time I go to Gander, I'll be able to get a few of those because uh, they're all missing in the house. I took them all off when I painted everything October of last year, the year before, um, and I didn't put them back on. So I need to work on that because that looks hideous. Uh, but I am going to paint this white. Um, at some point in time, I'm just more interested in actually being able to use it at the moment because I want to get this done because the vlog is going up tomorrow and I want to try to finish it and show you guys what it looks like. But if you're interested at all, um, this, my other setup, if you can remember, it used to have legs on the desk and it would kind of um, not allow me to do a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of, um, room. So, um, this is what we did. So underneath back here, it's hinged onto the wall. Um, it's cracked right there. That's fine. Um, it's hinged onto the wall and I have some hooks right here and right here on the wall to help keep it up. It, it is a little bit flimsy, but this is, this is what we use here in, uh, some people, I guess in, in Newfoundland here, use it for fishing line for, for, um, ice fishing. I'm not really sure what kind of string it actually is, but it is pretty heavy duty. And so it's hinged on both sides. And then we have these hooks in the wall, hooks in there. And I kind of rig this up for now. I am going to get some chain to go there, I think. So it's a little bit more sturdy, but these knots um, don't seem to be coming out. And then I just have the regular bolt uh, in the back here and that's what's keeping the camera on. And then I've got my um, plug-in um, the battery pack, it's not really, it is a battery pack, but it's not a battery, I guess, but it's uh, hooked in and plugged in underneath the desk, and I don't even need the light right now if I record during the day, but um, I really, I really do, I keep saying it, but I really do want to push myself to do some more live streams, so I'm hoping that this will give me the opportunity to do it. I probably won't do face cam or anything if I do, because I've been feeling really self-conscious about myself lately, um, and I haven't really been wearing a whole lot of makeup or anything, but we'll see what happens. But I have it all set up. It looks really good. It's all um, ready to go. I'm just going to turn it off here for a moment. And yesterday, it's currently the 25th, by the way, um, I made this. I made one of these last night. So um, my characters that I've been drawing, I'm going to be putting them on to my book covers. I'm not sure if I'm going to be offering any more of these um, as being laminated as of right now. This one here is a dotted paper. Um, this one, and it's not laminated. But what, the, what I'm finding is the lamination has little black flecks in it. And the clear vinyl and the lamination stuff that I do have, they both have it. And I don't know if it's really going to bother people. It's just little itty bitty teeny tiny flecks. And you kind of have to look for it. Like if you just picked up the book and you looked over the book, you probably wouldn't see it. But I'm so picky that I can actually um, see it in the vinyl and the, the, the laminate. So let me know what you guys think about that. Am I being too picky or, you know, is this... Should I maybe not use the uh, the vinyl that I have for laminating the covers and just let them go as is? This one went really nice. And this one is actually going to be up for a giveaway soon. So if you want to uh, have a chance to win one of these books and maybe a couple other little um, paper goods as well that I can fit into a regular size envelope or, a, a you know, that kind of an envelope then uh, just uh, keep an eye out for that because there'll be a post over on Instagram soon. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you're following me over there because that's where I will post it first. So um, I'm going to go and get a few things done here. The computer and everything's all ready to go. I've got my setup going and I just need to reactivate my paints here and take off the cover and I'm good to go. And then we have one dog down there and we have another dog over there. So um, that's, that's what's happening at the moment. So let's go and try to get this finished and, uh, in this vlog. All right, guys, I'm just trying to show you the little black fleck there. If you can just look down diagonally from the gloss dotted sticker that I have, you can see a little tiny black fleck right in the center of the screen. So there's one there and there's one right here. And... I believe that's all there is in this one. So, look at 
that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not really that big of a deal, but I don't want people to think that it's dirt or something underneath there because it didn't come from me. It came from the uh, lamination stuff that I put on there. So let me know what you think. Is that like not anything to worry about? I mean, it is homemade. Um, it's not from a factory or anything. And even if it did come from a factory, there still might be some defects. So let me know what you think. Um, should I not worry about the flex in the lamination? Or should I just omit the la omit the lamination altogether and just offer the just paper covers without the lamination? So yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Okay, let's hop right back into this painting and get it done. And as you can see right here, I already screwed up, put in on the black paint a little bit too thick. I'm actually not going to talk a whole lot. I'm going to add some music in here and hopefully you guys stick around to watch the end of this clip. As I'm watching this back on Corel Video Studio, it looks a tad bit blurry and I'm hoping that once I hit the render button, uh, it's that's going to fix itself. But if it does stay blurry after the fact, I apologize. I'll work on that. Uh, I there's something going on with my camera. I think I may have a setting on there that's that's not right. I'm not sure. I mean, the paint palette and the water dish and everything all looks relatively clear. So we'll see what happens. But for the next six minutes-ish, um, I am going to add in a little bit of music and hopefully uh, you guys will stick around. Uh, the Patreon shout out is at the end as well. So I'll be back to talk a little bit uh, about Patreon towards the end as I'm revealing the final painting. So I will talk to you guys then.
right, guys, we've made it to the end of the video. If you're still here, you're still around, let me know in the comments where your favorite sunny destination is. Um, and if you plan on visiting there once all this COVID crap is done with. That could be uh, a way to let me know that you made it to the end. I'm just, uh, I guess, unwrapping this piece, taking off the tape to show you guys what it looks like at the end. As I had mentioned, from a distance, it doesn't look horrible. It does look like something. Um, is it 100% perfect? Again, no, it's not, but it's done. I'm proud of it. I didn't give up, and that's the main thing. We're going to take some positive things away from this somewhat of a disaster. Anyway, I just wanted to end off the vlog here with my Patreon shoutouts, which is coming up just in a couple of minutes. And I wanted to say that over on Patreon for April, we got a couple fun things going on. We have a doodle a day challenge, which will be available to all patrons, no matter what tier you're in, uh, as little as $3 and you get a whole bunch of, uh, fun things to work on throughout the month of April. We have a design week where you guys are going to be helping me design or the patrons will be helping me design a character that's going to be on some of my maybe notebooks and some stickers and, and things like that. So that's super fun. There's a podcast happening, some digital downloads and all that fun stuff, depending on what tier you sign up to. So if you're interested in supporting me and you like what I do, pop over, check out Patreon, join our little family over there and help the community grow. It's always fun having some new people around and um I'm hoping to add more and more content as we go, as the community grows. So if you're interested in helping me with that and uh, making some new friends, pop over. The link's down in the description below. And uh, you can check out Patreon and what we have to offer over there. So yeah, here is the final piece. I hope you guys liked it for what it was. And uh, here is the Patreon shout out. My wonderful patrons for the month of March is Ashley Pixie Sticks, Jillian, and Ruby. Thank you guys so much for your support. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're already in the end screen. I'm going to let you guys go. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.